Well, folks, not all Benchmades are great. Today, we're going to be looking at the Mel Perdue 530 from Benchmade. And I gravitated towards this knife originally because of its slimness and because of its lightweight capability. This was the slimmest, most lightweight folder that I could find on the market with premium steel with a cool access lock or a similar good quality lock and with a lightweight capability because that's what I'm into. I'm into, for my EDC systems, ultra light folders whenever possible. The lighter the weight, the happier I am. And so when I saw this knife, there were some things about it that I was like, man, I love how slim it is. I love the weight. I'm not so sure about, you know, maybe the blade profile, some of the pocket clip options, some of that stuff. So I was willing to take a leap of faith, jump out there. I love most Benchmades, but I got to tell you that this one fell short in a lot of categories for me. So we're going to take a look today. We're going to dive into the ins and outs, what makes this knife really nice and slim what are some of its pros and then what are some of the cons that for me have really held it back and also offer you some other options to consider if you are like me and you're into the ultra light edc folders and that's what you're looking for in your edc system that's what we're going to discuss so let's go ahead and take a look at the 530 from benchmade and see what the pros and cons are and hopefully help you decide if this is the right folder for you so the blade, this is the first aspect of the knife. It's not really my style, and originally why I bought this is because it was basically the lightest, thinnest blade I could find, and I wanted to give it a shot. So I was willing to sacrifice some of the blade performance that I knew would be lacking, and just kind of the more dagger, stiletto-style blade that you get, which is more of a fighting self-defense knife than it is a utility knife, and that's how I carry my knives. I carry them for utility more than anything else. And so what we are getting here, on this particular version is a flat grind and a false swedged grind with that center going right down the middle there. We are looking at an overall blade length of three and a quarter inches overall and a maximum thickness all the way back here of 0 0.09. So under uh, an eighth of an inch thick for sure. Really precise tip, which it still is a good slicer, but really the only thing that makes it a good slicer is how thin the knife is. The grind angle is so abrupt down here that if it was any thicker, it would just be horrible at cutting, but it does a decent job and is pretty competitive with most other thicker knives because of how thin the blade is. So the geometry just kind of works in its favor. Now there are other models out there that you can choose from that will not have quite the large swedge, the G10 version, and uh, that will have more of just kind of like a little clip up here and a thicker overall spine. So just kind of think about that and how you you know prefer knives. This is obviously the cheaper version and the lightest weight version will come with this style of blade here. And so, I mean, it, it gets the job done. It's 154 CM steel which is a good steel now in today's market. Uh, it's, I would say, uh, middle of the road steel. It used to be a premium steel. Now I would say it's middle of the road. There's a lot of better steels out there, you know, S30V, uh, now the CPM 20CV um, that Benchmade is using on some of their other knives and just some of those other steels that are out there hold a much better edge and are easier to resharpen. But for the money and for the price, it's a good steel overall and very rust resistant and will hold a decent edge for you. Okay, lockup and deployment. This is a kind of a sticking point for me. Again, going to try and make it as slim as possible and as lightweight as possible. They had to cut every little corner they could. What ends up happening is up here near the front, we have these very small thumb studs. As you can see right here, they're, they're pretty micro and they barely stick up above the handle at all. Now they are ambidextrous on either side, but they're very narrow. And so what ends up happening is if when you engage it, it eats into your thumb and is pretty painful. Uh, you really got to build up a callus. Uh, so it took me about when I, I EDC'd this straight for about a month. This was like the only knife I was basically carrying in 90% of the time. And I really, it took me about two weeks to build up the calluses that I needed to. So I didn't really feel it anymore. And it is so so slim there and it's right up against the handle that you really need to know where it is to engage those thumb studs. So I would have liked to see those just maybe a little bit higher and a little bit deeper in the overall edge so it doesn't bite in and hurt your fingers as much as they do. Same is true here on the axis lock. Unlike I have here a mini griptilian, you can see that the axis lock 
Yeah, the studs are protruding from the handle. They're easy to grab, no real issue. That's not the case on this. They're almost flush with the handle again, just barely sticking up and again, a sharp edge ring around it almost. So it makes it so that they're pretty sharp when you grab them as well. So when you open the blade and then you go to grab it and close it, they again are abrasive on your finger. So you just really gotta build up some calluses for this knife, unlike most other Benchmates. But it does fly open nice and smooth when you do get that purchase, and then it is easy for you to disengage and close once you get that really good grab on it. But just know that the rings around the edges are rather abrupt, and so they wear on your fingers in ways that other Benchmates do not. So take that into consideration when you're considering the deployment and overall operation of the knife. But the access lock works great you have no issues with the solid you know lock up on the knife and the overall functionality it's just uncomfortable so this is a big selling point for why i picked up the blade the slimness and the lightweight capability the first thing is this this is a polymer plastic material they do have a g10 version that is slightly and i'm talking about like point something ounces heavier um, versions out there but those will be more expensive and obviously way more but the Palmer version is going to come in at 1.88 ounces. So under two ounces for an over three inch blade is pretty ridiculous. And I can't think of one off the top of my head that has all the features that this offers, the blade steel, all of that. There may be one or two out there, but it's really, it would be really hard to find. So that was the first selling point to me. I'm like, wow, awesome. And then the slimness of being 0.37 so under half an inch thick on the slimness of the of the handle makes it literally just disappear in your pocket. You do not know that you are carrying this knife. So that is a huge positive. The other dimension that I want to give you is that it is 4.17 inches overall length. So good real estate as well. So when you open that guy up with my large size hands and I wear large gloves and I share that with you so you can get it proportion for yourself, you can kind of see there I got plenty of room to spare off the back end. We have this kind of ribbing down the center on either side and then these kind of flare outs on back and front with kind of like what looks like a seashell kind of look there. And again, that's kind of to act as a guard to keep you in place. And it does that decently. It doesn't have the most massive amount of traction. It does have a little road jimping that just barely pops up right there. Um, but it doesn't have quite as deep a guard as you would expect. I'm just going to roll in what I have on the table. I'm shooting some other stuff tonight. I would argue that like this wrap model one in D2 steel, by the way. So I would say very competitive steel performance. And actually I prefer D2 over the 154 CM on this blade for uh, edge retention and working capability on a pocket knife. But anyway, uh, I have a really deep guard right here and a good thumb ramp and I'm really locked into place. So if I do any sort of stabbing or you know harder tasks, I am super locked in, not the case with this blade, it's a little, you know, there's enough there to kind of keep you on, but I wouldn't say it's the best when it comes to the traction. And then they just mirrored that on the back end here as well. So um, again, it's gonna be super thin, super slim, super lightweight, but the issue for me comes into um, just the, the noise factor. Uh, it's a very clunky, noisy handle. So when I close it, I don't know if you can hear that, this thing rattles around like a broken down jalopy or something. I it, it really begun to get on my nerves. It's a mixture of the blade because there's just such a small margin between the two um, handle scales there that even just a little bit of play and you can hear it smacking up against each side because it's that polymer plastic, it's gonna make that noise. The G10 model I'm sure would be somewhat quieter and the handle, or excuse me, and the pocket clip that we're gonna to get to here in just a second bounces back and forth as well. So it's a really kind of clunky, loud rattle. And because of the slimness, you're not gonna get great ergonomics for longer cutting tasks. It's only for some um, quick, you know, utility tasks or a stab or a thrust, a couple slashes, that's all you're gonna get out of it before it's gonna start to become so slim in your hand that it's not very comfortable for a long period of time. So take that in consideration when you're deciding on this knife. Now, this is another huge hang up for me. And I actually uh, got another pocket clip, but I'm swapping it out for another knife. Uh, I got the deep ride pocket clip that comes on several of the Benchmade Griptilians now uh, and got it for this knife originally because this was just so horrendous. Not only does this knife come with the worst pocket clip that Benchmade makes, their arrow, quote unquote, 
um, pocket clip, which I hate. It's ugly and looks like something else, and I just hate it. Uh, but on top of that, it is so high a ride that it really is obnoxious, and it does not really um, disappear in your pocket at all for how slim the knife is. It should have had that deep ride pocket clip that I just showed you on that other Benchmade out of the box. You can contact Benchmade and get those Griptilian uh, deep ride pocket clips and they are a perfect swap. And then it's a much better ride, but out of the box, it's just, it's horrible. Just to give us some perspective there, you can see, I mean, it's over an inch sticking up. It flares out, so it's going to take up a lot of room out there. Now, there is a lanyard hole, obviously, and it's a good, generous one. But just a bad call on the placement of the pocket clip as well as the pocket clip choice. And as long as you're willing to swap it out for one of the deep ride ones, and Benchmade uh, is willing to send a few of those to their customers each year, um, that that is the way to go. I think if you are going to purchase this version or the G10 version or whichever version, if you're getting this design, you've got to go with one of these deep ride pocket clips. It's a noticeable difference and a much better ride in the pocket. Out of the box, though, it's a really bad ride, and I hate it. Price point and competitive option. And this is another just kind of, uh, nail in the coffin, if you will, for the 530 design for me and why I am ultimately just not impressed with it, not digging it. What we have here is the Boker Patriot. And I wanted to run that in because when I purchased the Boker Patriot a few months ago, it immediately retired any need for me to carry the 530. And I just it just went by the wayside and has, has been retired fully. I, I just never use it anymore because of this reason. The main version that we're looking at here today of the 530 is going to run you about $95. And we will have a link in the description below, not only to every version of the 530 out there, uh, but also to this Boker that we're going to look at. Uh, and when you use the hyperlinks that we offer you over to Amazon, that's always a great way to help support the channel. It helps what we do here and keeps us a viewer funded channel. And we want to keep doing that for you guys and keep cranking out these videos for you. So uh, $95 for this version and about $130 for the G10 handled version. And I think $150 for the S30V version in G10 that is also available. Again, we'll have links below. Here's the deal, is that this Boker Patriot that we recently reviewed is going to run you about $65 to $70. It's 154cm, made in the USA, has a better grind angle. It is a Sabre grind, but a much higher grind angle. has basically the exact same blade length. It's going to have a thicker blade overall, but uh, it is a lockback design, so you're not going to get the cool axis feel, but it's much easier to operate than I feel the axis lock on here. Better purchase on the thumb studs as well as the, uh, than the, what the Benchmade offers you. And it does have that kind of polymer glass reinforced nylon uh, handle. And it's going to have a deep ride pocket clip that rides much better in the pocket than the stock pocket clip on the Benchmade. And the best part is that this is going to weigh 2.1 ounces versus the 1.88. So super close in weight class, but it's going to be about $20 to $25 cheaper. It's going to have a better overall grind angle. It's going to be easier to deploy and have a better pocket clip for what? 0.2 ounces more weight uh, and actually be a slightly thicker in the pocket and make it an overall more comfortable knife in the hand for you. So on Honestly, guys, I think that when you look at what else is out there on the market in the ultra light category, you're looking for something that's over three inches in blade length and is ultra lightweight. Though the Benchmade is the lightest that I've found, it, it compromises in too many other areas. And there are other knives like this Boker Patriot that are going to come in at a cheaper price point and be very close in weight class, but have better grind angles, better pocket clips, and overall better design, in my opinion. So that's where we stand on the price difference and the competitive options out there on the market that I've seen. Well, folks, there you have it. I hope this video has not only given you the action, showing you what this blade can do, but we have discussed in detail what this knife has in capabilities and what are its limitations, and hopefully just help you out when you are building your EDC systems. That's one of the main things I want to do is when you sit down and you're like, I'm building a system, does this fit inside your systems? Are you willing to sacrifice the blind grind angle? Are you willing to sacrifice the really noisy rattle and the goofy pocket clip and all the things that we've discussed for the pros, which are the ultra light capability and the ultra thin capability. For me, it's just not there. It's not a great knife, so I don't carry it. So that's why for me, this is not a recommendation. I can't recommend the 530 or any of its other substantive designs that have come out over the recent years. It's just not 
there for me, but I was willing to take the risk, not only for myself, but then also relay my thoughts to you, the viewers. So again, thank you so much for coming over here and checking out the channel and being willing to give your you know valuable time to invest in this video. Thank you so much. Please subscribe, comment, like, share this video. We're putting up new content every single week, doing in-depth reviews for you guys. Check us out on all the relevant social media as well. It's a great way to see what is up and coming. And always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.